Welcome to the tutorial on static hashing. So before we start, let me give you a little introduction on why we need hashing or indexing in general. So the main goal is that if we want to do random access, we want to make the search efficient in a database relation. That's why indexing or hashing is needed. So for static hashing, what we do is, imagine we have a large domain of search key values called D. So instead of taking this entire huge domain of values, we map it to a smaller range of numbers or hash values using what a hash function. So think of names as search keys. For example, so name of a person can easily range from 30 to 40 characters even. Let's say a person has a name of 20 characters. Now each of these characters, how many possibilities are there? So each of these characters can be any of the 26 alphabets that we have. So there are 26 alphabets. Also, let's take a blank space. So blank is also one possibility. So there are a total of 27 possibilities for each of these 20 characters. So what is our domain size? It is 27 to the power 20, which is a huge value. So instead of taking all of these possibilities, we will map it to a smaller range of numbers or hash values using a hash function. So for any search key, k, h, k is what? It is the hash value, where h is your hash function. So when there are two different search key values and using the same hash function, when we feed these two search key values, let's say k1 and k2 are two different search keys and we feed them to the same hash function h, this hash function can be anything. And Generally, what should happen is for key k1 and key k2, two different hash values might be generated. So, those two hash values will map it to two separate buckets. But what happens if both of these different search keys give rise to the same hash value after passing through this hash function? In that case, what happens is called a collision. That is, both of them are mapped to the same bucket. So, after we feed a search key into a hash function, it maps that record or the record which the search key is pointing to it maps that record to a bucket a hash bucket now for two different search keys if the hash function returns the same uh, hash value then both of those records will be mapped to the same bucket now a bucket can have one or more records in it that depends on the size of the bucket but once let's say we have a bucket which can hold two records now let's say for key k1 and k2, both of these records are mapped to this bucket. So at this point, this bucket is filled. So now what happens if there is one more key k3, which is also getting mapped to this same bucket. So at that point, this bucket is filled. So this is called an overflow. So we will see how we can handle overflows. So collision happens when for two different search keys k1 and k2, the hash function generates the same hash value. Okay. So let's look at this example. So here the keys are these names John Smith, Lisa Smith, Sam Doe, and Sandra D. So you see, there is some hash function here which we haven't mentioned what it is. So John Smith gets mapped to this bucket. But Sandra D is also getting mapped to this same bucket, even though they're different search keys. So this is what this is a collision but again lisa is mapped to this bucket sam is mapped to this bucket so these are fine so bucket is what it is nothing but a unit of storage containing one or more records now bucket size will depend in a hash file organization we obtain the bucket of a record directly from its search key value using hash function that means you pass the search key value through the hash function whatever hash value is generated that will direct you to the certain bucket where it should be mapped so now let's talk about this hash function. So hash functions can be anything. Now, the worst hash function is the one which will map all the search key values or all the records to the same bucket. So this is the worst case. Why? Because then all of these are leading to collisions. And the best hash function is what? When uniformly the search key values are distributed in the buckets. That is all buckets have the same number of search key values. 
now a uniform distribution is ideally done by a random hash function so only by doing randomization we can get such uniformity in the distribution but we cannot purely work with random hash functions so collisions can be reduced but they cannot be totally eliminated okay so hash function is used to locate records for access insertion as well as deletion now records with different search key values may be mapped to the same bucket thus entire bucket has to be searched sequentially to locate a record so this means that once we reach a bucket that is we generated a hash value for a certain search key which points us to the bucket where that record is stored now once we reach that bucket that bucket might be storing any number of records depends on the bucket size now inside the bucket we have to do linear search there is no other option so what happens when there is a bucket overflow so let's see that bucket overflow can occur when when there are insufficient number of buckets let's say you have a large domain of uh, search key values but there are very small number of buckets that is you are mapping a very large domain of values to a very small range of hash values or buckets so in that case there is obviously a way a higher chance of getting bucket overflows one more thing that can happen is that there is a skew in the distribution of records so the data might be inherently skewed like say you have a university database where there are let's say 200 professors in computer science department and there are let's say 10 professors in music department so if your search key is based on the department then all of those 200 professors will be mapped to one bucket for the computer science department but the music department there are only 10 people so in case of computer science there will be a lot more collisions than in case of music so the data can be inherently skewed or the hash function might generate hash values that are not uniform that are not resulting in uniform distribution so in this case in this case of overflow what do we do we handle this using overflow buckets that is we use a method called overflow chaining so in overflow chaining overflow buckets of a given bucket are chained together in a linked list basically let's say in this bucket 0 we can store two records again in bucket 1 also we can store two records now let's take that previous example let's say there are five instructors in cs department and this uh, hash bucket distribution is done on the basis of departments so each bucket is for a separate department let's say this one is for music this one is for computer science this one is for biology like this so for computer science we have five different instructors five different records which will all be mapped to this bucket but this bucket one can only hold two records at max so record one and record two are stored as soon as we get another record here there is an overflow so what we have to do is we have to do this overflow chaining method so we will actually attach another exactly similar bucket with the help of a linked list with this bucket one so here also we can store two records so let's say record three and record four come here but again the fifth record cannot fit in here so we have to chain one more bucket here and here we can have the fifth record but what this does is overflow chaining dramatically increases the cost because see if you want to access this fifth record you first have to you will first be directed by the uh, hash value to this bucket one so here you will linearly search but you won't find your desired result so you will then go to the bucket that's linked to it the overflow bucket here also you linearly search but you cannot find it again you go to this bucket and here when you start linear searching you will get your desired record so there is a lot of linear searching involved so obviously the cost will dramatically increase now let's take a small example here so what is an example of a hash function in this example we can see so this is based on this relation so here this is the id of the professor this is the name this is the department and this is the salary so this hash bucket distribution is done on the search key id see it is given here that computed adding the digits modulo 8 so whatever is the id we have to add the digits individually and then do a mod 8 so let's take the first record which has id 7 
six six seven six seven six six. So this is the ID. So let's sum the digits. So that is seven plus six plus seven plus six plus six. So this will give us what? Seven seven fourteen. This is eighteen. Fourteen plus eighteen is thirty two. So thirty two mod eight is going to give me what? Zero. So that's why this record is mapped to bucket zero. Now let's take this record. One five one five one. So this is for Mozart. So one plus five plus one plus five plus one. So this is thirteen. Thirteen mod eight is going to give us five. So that's why this is mapped to bucket five. Now you see to bucket five, there are already two records mapped here. Now when this record comes, this five eight five eight three. This record is also mapped to this bucket five only, but bucket five is already filled. Here all the buckets have only the storage capacity of two records. So here already this bucket is filled. So we have to go for overflow chaining. So you see, using a linked list, we have linked one more bucket here, and in this bucket we can now store the new record. So this is how a typical hash function works. So in static hashing. A function h maps search key values to a fixed set of b, that is b number of buckets. Now, if initial number of buckets is too small, so we know that a database is what it is a dynamic structure. That means that a database can grow or shrink in size. So initially, when we form a database, we know that it will not always stay in that exact size. We can add more records. We can delete some records. So if initial number of buckets is too small and the file grows that is i have let's say 5 buckets and initially that is enough to map all the records but what if i add 100 more new records in my database then those 5 buckets will not be enough so performance will degrade because too many overflows will happen all of these records are being mapped to a very small number of buckets but to avoid this if we allocate let's say 100 buckets initially but over time we see that our database is not growing that much So in that case, all of that allocated space is now wasted space. So this is the fault of static hashing. This is the drawback. So what is the solution for this? The one solution is that we can have dynamic number of buckets. That is, number of buckets can change. We don't need to have fixed number of buckets. So this dynamic number of buckets gives rise to something called dynamic hashing, which we will see in a different tutorial. So before we end this, let's do one more example. So let's take this example. Here we have four different hash functions given to us: h1, h2, h3, and h4. Now we have to identify the hash functions that can generate unique hash values for the following search key values. So these are our search keys given to us. Uh, seven different search keys are there. So for each of these hash functions, we have to check with all of these search key values to check. Which one will work? So let's start with H one. So H one is saying n mod seven. So for H one, the hash function is n mod seven, where n is nothing but the search key. So let's start with forty three. So forty three mod seven will give you one. So let's say H one forty three gives you one. Then there is H two. I'm sorry, there is a. H one only in H one. Let's take sixty five. So sixty five mod seven is what two. Then H one eighty nine. This will give eighty nine mod seven. That is one and uh, two is fourteen. So five. Then we have H one ten. This will give me seven. H one twelve. This will give me five again. So there is already a collision. We can tell. So these are not generating unique hash values. So we can already discard this function because there is a collision. Now we'll go to the next function that is H two. H two function is n square plus one mod seven. That is, we have to take this entire n square plus one value and then do mod seven on it. So let's start with forty three again. So what is forty three square plus one 
that will be 1850 1850 mod 7 this will give us what 7 to the 14 then uh, that is 7 6 of 42 so this will give me 2 then h2 65 so 65 square is 4225 plus 1 is 4226 mod 7 this will give what So seven six forty two. So this will give five. This is giving five. Then H three. I'm sorry, H two on eighty nine. Eighty nine square is seven nine two one. So seven nine two two mod seven. This will give us what? Calculate this so seven one seven seven uh, one are seven so two is remainder seven three is a twenty one then twelve so seven one are seven again we have five so see one more collision here so not unique hash values that means h two is also not the correct hash function so let's try on h three so if you want to try on h three now. So H3 is 3n plus 3 and then mod 7 on this entire thing. So let's do H343. So 43 into 3 is 129 plus 3 is 132. 132 mod 7 is what? 7 ones are 7. Then 7 eights are 56. So 6. Then H365 is? So 3 fives are 15, 3 6 are 18, 19. So 195 plus 3 mod 7 is 198 mod 7. So this will give 7 to the 14, 7 8 are 56, so 2. Then H3 89. See till now all the hash values are unique, 6 and 2. So 89 into 3 is 9 3 is 27, 3 is 24, 26. Plus 3 that is 270 mod 7. So 270 mod 7 is how much? 7 3 is a 21 and then uh, 7 8 is a 56. So that will give you 4. So this is also unique hash value. Next we have H4. I'm sorry, this is H3 only on 10. So 33 mod 7. Is how much? 7 4 is a 28. So 5. So this is also unique. Next, let's check for 12. So this is 39 mod 7. So 39 mod 7 is how much? 7 5 is a 35. So 4. Now there is a collision. This is also 4. This is also 4. So we can tell that H3 is also not the correct hash function. So now we only have one option left. So this has to be the answer. But still let's verify this once. So H4n. The function is. Floor of n by 2. Plus 2 mod 7. So we'll place our search keys in place of n. And calculate this whole thing. And then do mod 7 on it. So let's do it for 43 first. So. 43 by 2 is going to give us what? 22.5. Sorry, 21.5. So if we take the floor value that is 21 plus 2 mod 7, that is 23 mod 7 is going to give us 2. So first hash value is 2. Next, let's check for 65. So 65 by 2 is how much? 32.5. That is, we'll take the floor value. So 32 plus 2 mod 7. So 34 mod 7 is going to give us 6. Next, let's check for 89. So 89 by 2 is how much? 44.5. So we'll take floor value 44 plus 2 mod 7. That is 46 mod 7. It's going to give hash value 4. Next, for 10. So 10 by 2 is 5 plus 
so 7 mod 7 is going to give us 0 then h5 is 12 so 12 by 2 is 6 plus 2 mod 7 that is 8 mod 7 is going to give us 1 sixth key is 48 sorry these are all hash function 4 only so 48 by 2 is 24 plus 2 mod 7 so 26 mod 7 this is giving hash value 5 then we have the last one that is h4 31 so 31 by 2 is 15.5 so we'll take the floor value that is 15 plus 2 mod 7 so 17 mod 7 this is going to give hash value 3 so see each of these hash values 2 6 4 0 1 5 3 these are all unique so h4 is generating all unique hash values hence this is our answer so i hope static hashing is clear to you now so thanks for watching the tutorial